Now, I'm going to be assuming that you've seen either all of or part of my original JTAG series, um, because the information there will be quite valuable here if you don't quite understand it. Um, bear in mind, this is going to be a one-shot video, so uh, it's only covering the soldering from an intermediate level. Um, that being compared with the kind of the noob-ish method I uh, tried to substitute for the original because people were not going to have necessarily the hardware required for this uh, and probably most won't have now but uh, I'm not going to cover disassembling this thing I'm just going to basically strip it apart and I'll cut to somewhere when it's already in pieces and we can begin work Torque 8 other flathead screwdriver, iron tinner, solder, first person to try and correct the pronunciation dies, stand for iron, and the iron itself. Okay, so today we're going to be working with these points right here, and uh, if we look over to the side, a few of these ones. Now I apologize if the focus is not quite perfect, uh, I'm using a wide angle lens, and as you can imagine it's not designed for close up shots. So we're going to start off by uh, getting our iron ready, this iron is actually cold right now. Pain. Right. You'll also want to clean off the area. You can use rubbing alcohol if you want. Um, I'm not going to because this is a dead motherboard to begin with. Okay, so relatively straightforward. Once your iron has uh, heated up, you just uh, stick it into your solution there and uh, give it, get a coating. Just the um, the top of the uh, the top of the iron. Get rid of any excess on your sponge there, and uh, that'll do it. Sorry about the shadows, I have really, really high um, aperture on the camera, so there's going to be really high contrast. So we just take our solder here, stick the iron into the point, bring in the solder, and you just tin the first point there. Don't worry about the uh, flux burn. First point is done there. Uh, you may want to get rid of the excess solder from your iron. That's why you have your uh, sponge over there. And move on to the next one. Stick the soldering iron in. And bring down the solder. Now with this you want to be very careful that you don't leave your iron in there too long and damage the point because that would be horrible. If you're seeing an insane amount of lux burn there, um, that is actually just the camera. There's practically none here. I don't know what's going on there. I'm hoping you can see this well, but uh, you can see there we just bring the iron in, add the solder to the point, simple enough. Third point, set the iron down. Just want to be very careful with this. I'm doing this in the wrong order because uh, otherwise the angle would be insane. I'll try to show a different angle here. The angle is very difficult for me to actually show you this properly. So you take your iron here, you stick it down to the point. You need to have a needle tip iron for this to work properly now. So you heat the solder or the point, and you bring in the new solder. And the first point is now tinned there. That one's done. Third point, solder. Done. Next one. 
Sorry, my hand's shaking. I'm holding this at a really weird angle. I can barely actually see where I'm putting this. <laughs> okay. Next point. Next point. Okay, I really hope you can actually uh, see this. I have to hold the camera with the um, with the anti-shake on. You should be able to see the completed points in there, but I can't be sure. As you can see, the greatly exaggerated flux burn earlier is quite literally nothing at all. Um, it turns out the uh, liquid, the, the uh, flux was actually glowing or reflecting the light from above it. So dark areas were quite literally completely black, which I'm going to try to see if I can prevent that from happening again in the future. But uh, I'll show you how to uh, insert the wires properly next, which is extremely easy to do if you have the right soldering iron. Okay, how do you get the wiring? That being this really tiny wire here, which is out of focus and blurry. Now, my battery on the camera light is blinking red. Okay, that made no sense. But if this battery dies during this video, it'll be the first and loudest time you've ever heard me exclaim profanely in a video. But let's get going. So, you got your iron here. You want to stick the iron into the solder you added in earlier. Heat it up. Followed by your wire. You have one connection. Perfect. If you want, you can dump more solder on top of the wire to help you out there. I'll cover another point just to show you again. You have a point in there. Bring the soldering iron in. Bring the wire in. And stick the wire into your point. You can barely see this, I'm very sorry. There we go. Don't want to put it in too far, it's a very long wire. Um, so there's really nothing to this if you have the right soldering iron and uh, of course the uh, necessities. Now the same thing goes of course for uh, your resistors which you can see here I hope. So if you get um, another point over here where is that thing gone to? Uh, last I'm in a hurry here come on. Alright so got one point in there which I also hope you can see. You grab your iron stick it in there take your resistor put that in there we go, connection done with. Like I said before, you got optional, you can add more solder on top of that if you want. So keep the wire and the point, feed in more solder, and you got a beautifully strong connection. Now, as for connecting the resistors to wires, to extend them, that's also quite easy. I'll show you that now. So we got a resistor here, we got a wire here. Uh, you wanna make sure you've got quite a bit of copper on your wire there exposed. So you grab your wire, wrap it around, well, slightly wrap it around your resistor leg, which should ideally be not too long. That'll do for our purposes. Grab your soldering iron, grab some solder, and stick your iron below your wire, and you just go feed some solder onto that. Just give it a nice coating. Sorry about all that clouds up there. And there you go, you've got a nice connection in there. And my camera battery just died at the end of my sentence. I'm so, so thankful it waited. Anyway, um, so this connection here is uh, not entirely perfect. It's good, but um, it'll work for your purposes. Um, this particular method of uh, applying solder to the wire and the resistor might be better suited to uh, stranded wires. In an ideal case, you'd want to shorten the leg of the resistor, maybe shorten the wire a bit, um, and you could possibly, if you intend to leave the wire in the console as part of the JTAG connectors, you might want to apply a uh, rubber shrink insulator to it, and uh, that would that would do for that. In addition, I recommend against clipping these wires after you have actually uh, soldered them, because you may damage the integrity of the solder, and that could have repercussions down the line in terms of reliability. Uh, but uh, that's the basic connection there for you. Um, so today we've covered um, how to actually get your points filled up with solder. Uh, there are of course multiple ways of doing that too. We've covered how to uh, insert your wires relatively easily, how to get them back out again, well that's kind of obvious, um, and how to attach a wire to a resistor, which as far as I can remember were uh, 
I think the primary questions asked in relation to the uh, original JTAG uh, tutorial. So um, I think that's about everything I need to cover today. Also, before someone gets the idea to ask, as they inevitably do, about what the name of the song in the beginning of the video is, I'll tell you in advance. Save myself a few thousand lines of comment replies. The track is uh, Let's Spin Wildly, which could be slightly mistranslated, I'm not entirely sure, by Supercell. I'd highly recommend having a listen to some of their tracks. Um, bought the album recently, very unique music. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I uh, hope you found this video insightful, and I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. You can't see that. Never mind.